Hello everyone, there's a lot going on today. I'm gonna have a look at the breeding pairs, and I think I've got about 20 pairs together now. So I've really ramped things up. We're working on breeding the race team for next year. So I've got all the good birds together. I think we'll start up the other end of the loft and have a look at the pairs in that end first. But just as a little teaser, I'm really hoping to be able to tell you about my new secret project, hopefully in the next video. So make sure you drop your guesses in the comments. Let me know what you think it is. I'll give you guys a hint, none of you got anywhere near it in your guesses in the previous video. Just as a little hint, it's nothing to do with my loft or my pigeons, but I'll leave it at that for the moment. Anyway, let's get down there and look at the birds. So we'll start up this end of the loft. I did say last time that these guys would have laid by now, and they haven't. They've proved me to be a liar. Uh, last time I bred from these guys, they actually took a while to lay as well, but they produced some amazing, incredible babies once they finally got their act together. So I'm not too concerned. She's only a young hen, 2018? She might even be a 2019 hen, actually. So I'm not concerned that they haven't laid yet. They took their time last time. But I've got confidence that once they do lay some eggs and get some babies out, they'll be top quality. Their neighbours actually did lay an egg. I laid two eggs, actually. And you might be able to see the remnants behind him. This pair, with his cancer in his leg and her missing a foot, they, they can't raise their own babies. The way they limp around, it just causes damage to the eggs. I was planning on fostering out the eggs of these guys because in the past they have smashed plenty of their own eggs. But unfortunately they smashed one of the eggs before I even got a chance to do it. Their other egg I was able to save. I've moved that egg into a different nest, so you'll see that later in the video. But uh, down below these guys, there are the other four boxes. In the previous video, I hadn't filled these boxes yet, but I have put a few pairs in. Now, all my boxes are full now. These ones, they're just birds that I've got together for racing. You know, the stock that you guys didn't believe I had when I was only showing the coloured birds. They've only been together for a few days, so there's no eggs or babies yet, obviously. And then down here on the floor, it's the same, although there's a little grizzle in here, so you might call this a colour pair. Then neighbours. You might remember this pair, I had them on the other side. It's the little dark checker hen with the crest who was not keen on pairing up with her blue bark off bird. I gave them a change of scenery to see if it might help. It doesn't seem to have helped. They just don't seem to want to pair up these guys. So I might have to change this pair around. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do yet. He tries his best, this guy, but she's just not interested in him. been driving her for weeks without any success at all really. It's a real shame because I wanted this pair to go together. I was going to even put my $10 rings on this pair. But she has no interest in him at all. So that's it for these guys, these six pairs over here. The rest of the birds in this side of the loft are my spare cock birds, and as you can see there's a few too many of them. These guys are either birds that I'm planning on breeding with and they don't have a partner or a box at the moment, or they're leftover birds from my colour projects that I'm not currently working on. So like we've got my Andalusian, Tiger Grizzle, who else is there? There's little mosaic cock. So I'm not aiming to keep this many spare cock birds. I'd rather have no spare birds in the breeding section to be honest. But for the moment, whilst I'm still settling into the new loft, there's a few spare birds. And we'll have a close look at some of them in the future. But for now, let's move on to the next section and look at some more of the breeding pairs. So now we're in the side of the loft where the breeding hens are kept. And you can see I only have one pair locked up at the moment. So this is where the blue bark hawk with the crested hen was. I hadn't paired up in this side. I thought a change of scenery might help. But as you just saw, it, it hasn't really helped much. The rest of the pairs have been let out. These guys are just another racing pair. I just want them to lay eggs before I let them out of their box. They have made a bit of a mess, so I'll clean these guys up soon. But next to those guys, we have this pair. Uh, they have two fertile eggs, which is a good sign. Down below them, recessive red pair, two fertile eggs. And then next to them is the... This is the cock who carries Barless. And I already had one round from him and the hen he's with this year and I wasn't actually planning to let them go for one more but they produced a very very nice baby so I've let them go for another round hopefully we get the same quality again and I'll be able to test them on the racetrack next year 
There will be no barless birds from this pair, obviously. The mother of the eggs, or the hen this guy's paired with, she doesn't carry barless. But some of the babies will carry barless, and they all get tested on the racetrack. And then down on the floor, again, there are two more pairs. I know some people don't like breeding on the floor. It's something I've always done. I don't see any problem with it. And I've even bred winners on, from pairs on the floor. I think as long as you know who the parents are, it doesn't matter where they were bred. So here's a little one for Kurt, for Kurt Maney. These are the parents of Kurt's blue bar hen. He has asked me to show him the parents of that hen. So here you go. That's the cockbird standing up on the back and the hen on the nest. These guys have two eggs and I'm looking forward to seeing their babies in two weeks. Next to them is a long distance pair. I've never really done much good on long distance racing, but I've put these guys together just to give it a go. We'll see if we have much luck. Uh, she only laid one egg. This is a young hen, it's her first egg. And she hasn't laid a second, so so it looks like this is just going to be a single nester. That is something that happens sometimes. Pigeons usually lay two eggs, but occasionally they'll just lay one. And that's what's happened here. So that's the sixth pair on this side of the loft. There actually is a seventh pair. It's old brown bar cock and the spread brown hen. They've also been nesting on the floor. Uh, the brown bar cock, he's proven to not be fertile. He's filed three rounds of eggs this year and all three have been infertile. I have used him as a foster parent and if he lays, well if his hen, if she lays on time with another pair, I will use them as another foster pair. Because although he doesn't produce his own babies, he actually is quite a good father. There are also a few spare birds on this side of the loft. There's this hen. Very, very nice hen. And a very well-performed racing pigeon, this one. But she just doesn't seem to lay many eggs anymore, so I'm not wasting any space with her. We also have a few of the colour projects. So there's the lemon hen. I have been asked a lot if I'm going to be breeding from the lemon hen. Yes, I will be. When I have space. At the moment, the racing pigeons are taking up all the space. But in a few months, there will be a spare box and I'll put her in it. Uh, the almond hen is here. So that answers the question from last time. I was planning on breeding from this hen again because she had a, I had her paired up with a cockbird and she hadn't shown any interest in him. I was going to put her back after a few days break, but you'll have to see what I've decided to do instead. I'll show you that one soon. And I think that's all the spare hens. Oh no, there's this blue bar. She carries ember. And I'll be pairing her up later in the year again when there's a bit more room. But that's all on this side. Let's move into the flying side. So finally we're in the last section where I have some birds breeding. Down here, this is the cockbird who I had paired up to the almond hen. You might remember if you've been watching for a while that he was paired up with the barless hen. And they produced a nice little baby who went to race. I've decided to put him back with the barless hen over this side. And I'm just going to use them as foster parents. Because I would like to get a few babies out of some of the better racing pigeons. So I've got these guys back together. I'm not going to let them raise their own babies. They are just going to be foster parents looking after eggs and young birds from the better racing pigeons. Up above them is this pair and I don't know what's wrong with this hen. She just hasn't laid eggs for me. I bred from this hen last year, not even, probably only eight or nine months ago. And she produced eggs and raised babies with this cockbird. So I don't know what her problem is. I'm just leaving them be for the moment. Hopefully she'll lay soon and we can get some babies. Next door, this guy is sitting on hatching eggs right now. I'm not gonna get him off because he's always cranky at me and he doesn't like me looking at his babies. But they should be hatched by tonight and we'll have a few more young birds. But even if we wanted to have a look, he wouldn't let us. Down below, this guy's on eggs. This guy's a feisty little guy too. He doesn't like to fight me as much, but he likes to fight the other cockbirds and try and take over the loft. So hopefully he puts a bit of tenacity into the young birds and fills them with a the desire to come home on race day. Down below him is this guy. 
That's not how you set on eggs. This is another cockbird who is unfortunately not filling eggs. I was hoping to experiment with his strange wing pattern, but I don't think it's going to happen. He's had two rounds of eggs, none of them have been fertile. So I've got him currently sitting on the one surviving egg from the pencil pair that I showed you at the start of the video. And these guys are going to be the foster parents for that egg, if it turns out to be fertile. Then we have my old, old boy and his little blind hen. Again, fertile eggs. Hopefully he sits on to completion this time, because he did upset me last time when he got off the eggs just before they were about to hatch. That was very frustrating. And the final pair are down below. They've uh, got a sneaky little nest underneath the boxes. They're just a, a bit of fun, those guys, the brown pair. And she's not going to let me see her, but hopefully, oh, there's the cockbird down there. Hopefully they produce us some nice little brown babies, just as a bit of fun. So that's all the breeding pairs together. That's about, I think it's about 20 pairs altogether. So it won't be long and then all of a sudden we're going to have plenty of flying pigeons. And I'm really looking forward to that. I know some of you guys have been watching my channel for over two years now. And we haven't had any flying pigeons, we haven't had any racing. Uh, but it's all coming together now. We've got the big loft. I'm breeding the racing team. It's just a few months and then we'll be racing pigeons, which I know myself I've been looking forward to for a long time and you guys who have been watching me you've been looking forward to that too so thanks for your support thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time